Hi boys and girls, we're gonna read chapter three today. Here we go. Remember Charlotte's Web. Chapter three, The Escape. The barn was very large. It was very cold, it smelled of hay, and it smelled of manure. It smelled of the perspiration of tired horses and the wonderful sweet breath of patient cows. It often had a sort of peaceful smell as though nothing bad could happen ever again in the world. It smelled of grain and of horses dressing and of axle grease of the rubber boots on new rope. And whatever the cat was given fish headed to eat, the barn would smell of fish. But mostly it smelled of hay, for there was always hay in the great loft up overhead. And there was always hay being pitched down to the cows and to the horses and to the sheep. The barn was pleasantly warm in the winter when the, animal, when the, when the animals spent most of their time indoors. And it was pleasantly cool in the summer when the big doors stood wide open to the breeze. The barn had stalls on the main floor for the, for the work horses, tie-ups on the main floor for the cows, a sheep fold down below for the sheep, and pig pen down below for Wilbur. And it was full of sorts of things that you may find in barns. Ladder, ladders, grindstones, pitchforks, monkey wrenches, lawnmowers, snow shovels, axe handles, milk pails, water buckets, empty grain sacks, and rusty rat traps. It was that kind of barn that swallows like to build in their nests. It was the kind of barn that children like to play in. And the whole thing was owned by Fern's uncle, Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman. Wilbur's new home was in the lower part of the barn directly underneath the cows. Mrs. Zuckerman knew that a manure pile is a good place to keep a young pig. Pigs need warmth, and it was warm and comfortable down there in the barn cellar on the south side. Fern came almost every day to visit him. She found an old milking stool that had been discarded and she placed the stool in the sheep fold next to Wilbur's pen. Here she sat quietly during the long afternoons, thinking and listening and watching Wilbur. The, the sheep soon got to know her and trust her. So did the geese who lived with the sheep and the animals trusted her. She was so quiet and friendly. Mr. Zuckerman did not allow her to take Wilbur out and he did not allow her to get into the pig pen. But he told Fern that she could sit on the stool and watch Wilbur as long as she wanted to. It made her happy just to be near the pig. And it made Wilbur happy to know that she was sitting there right outside his pen. But he never had any fun, no walks, no rides, no swims. One afternoon in June, when Wilbur was almost two months old, he wandered out into his small yard outside the barn. Fern had not arrived yet for her usual visit. Wilbur stood in the sun, feeling lonely and bored. There's never anything to do around here, he thought. He walked slowly to his food trough and sniffed to see if anything had been overlooked at lunch. He found a small strip of potato skin and he ate it. His back itched, so he leaned against the fence and rubbed against the boards. When he was tired of this, he walked indoors, climbed to the top of the manure pile and sat down. He didn't feel like going to sleep. He didn't feel like digging. He was tired of standing still, tired of lying down. I'm less than two months old and I'm tired of living, he said. He walked out to the yard again. When I'm out here, he said, there's no place to go but in. When I'm indoors, there's no place to go but out in the yard. That's where you're wrong, my friend, my friend, said a voice. Wilbur looked through the fence and he saw a goose standing there. You don't have to stay in the dirty little, dirty little, dirty little yard, said the goose who talked fast. One of your boards is loose. Push on it, push, push, push on it and come out. What, said Wilbur? Say it slower, at, 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 at risk of repeating yourself, the wonder, said the wonderful goose. I suggest you come out, it's wonderful out here. Did you say a board was loose? That I did, that I did, said the goose. Wilbur walked up to the fence and saw that the goose was right. One board was loose. He put his head down, shut his eyes and pushed. The board gave way. In a minute, he had squeezed through the fence and was standing in the long grass outside his yard. The goose chuckled. How does it feel to be free? She asked. I like it, said Wilbur. That is, I guess I like it. Actually, Wilbur felt quite queer to be outside of his fence with nothing between him and the big world. Where do you think I'd better go? Anywhere you'd like, anywhere you like, said the goose. 
Go down to the orchard, root up the, st root up the sod, go down to the garden, dig up the radishes, root up everything, eat grass, look for corn, look for oats, run all over, skip and dance, jump and prance, go down through the orchard and stroll in the woods. The world is a wonderful place when you're young. I can see that, replied Wilbur. He gave a jump in the air, twirled, ran a few steps, stopped, looked at the air, looked, looked around, sniffed the smells of the afternoon, and then sat, set off walking down the path through the orchard. Pausing in the shade of the apple tree, he put his strong snout into the ground and began pushing, digging, and rooting. He felt very happy. He had plowed up quite a piece of ground before anyone noticed him. Mrs. Uckerman was the first to see him. She saw him from the kitchen window, and she immediately shouted for, for the men. Homer, she cried, pigs out, Lurvy, pigs out, Homer, Lurvy, pigs out. He's down under the apple tree. Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I'll catch it. The goose heard the racket too, and she started hollering. Run, 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 down they'll make for the woods, woods, she shouted to Wilbur. They'll never, never, never catch you in the woods. The Cocker Spaniel heard the commotion and he ran out from his barn to chase Mr. Zuckerman. Heard, to chase, Mr. Zuckerman heard, came out from the machine shed where he was mending a tool. Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he had been pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed so long off and away. He had never been down there in the woods and he wasn't sure he would like it. Get around behind him, Lurvy said Mr. Zuckerman, and drive him toward the barn. And take it easy, don't rush him. I'll get a bucket of slops. The news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals on the place. Whenever any creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was of great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free, and soon the cows knew. One of the cows told one of the sheep, and soon the sheep knew. The lamb learned it from their mothers. The horse in the stalls of the barn perked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of his friends had got free and was no longer penned or tied up. Wilbur didn't know what to do or which way to run. It seemed as though everybody was after him. If this is what it's like to be free, he thought, I believe I'd rather be penned in my own yard. The Cocker Spaniel was sneaking up on him from one side. Lurvy, the higher man, was sneaking up on him from the other side. Mrs. Zuckerman stood ready to head off if he started down to the garden. And now Mr. Zuckerman was coming down carrying a pail. This is really awful, thought Wilbur. Why doesn't Fern come? He began to cry. The goose took command and began to give orders. Don't just stand there, Wilbur. Dodge about, dodge about, cried the goose. Skip around, run toward me, slip in and out, in and out, in and out, make for the woods, twist and turn. The Cocker Spaniel sprang for Wilbur's hind leg. Wilbur jumped and ran. Lurvy reached out and grabbed Mrs. Zuckerman, screamed at Lurvy. The goose cheered for Wilbur. Wilbur dodged between Lurvy's legs. Lurvy missed Wilbur and grabbed the Spaniel instead. Nicely done, nicely done, try the goose. Try it again, try it again. Run downhill, suggested the cows. Run toward me, yelped the gander. Run uphill, cried the sheep. Twist and turn, honked the goose. Jump and dance, said the rooster. Look out for Lurvy, called the cows. Look out for Zuckerman, yelled the gardener. Watch out for the dog, cried the sheep. Listen to me, listen to me, screamed the goose. Poor Wilbur was dazed and frightened in all of this hullabaloo. It didn't, he didn't like being in the center of all the fuss. He tried to follow the instructions of his friends as they were giving it to him, but he couldn't run downhill and uphill at the same time, and he couldn't twist and turn when he was jumping and dancing, and he was crying so hard that he could barely see anything that was happening. After all, Wilbur was a very young pig, not much more than a baby, really. He wished Fern were there to take him in her arms and comfort him. When he looked up and saw Mrs. Zuckerman standing quite close to him, holding a pail of warm slops, he felt relieved. He lifted his nose and sniffed. The smell was delicious, warm milk, potato skins, wheat meldings, Kellogg's cornflakes, and a popover left from Zuckerman's breakfast. Come, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman, tapping the pail. Come, pig. Wilbur took a step toward the pail. No, 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 said the goose. It's the old pail trick, Wilbur. Don't fall for it, don't fall for it. He's trying to lure you back into captivity, ivity. 
and he's appealing to your stomach. Wilbur didn't care. The food smelled appetizing. He took another step toward the pail. Pig, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman in a kind voice and began walking slowly toward the barnyard, looking at him innocently as if he didn't know a little white pig was following him along. You'll be sorry, 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 called the goose. Wilbur didn't care. He kept walking toward the pail of slops. You'll miss your freedom, honked the goose. An hour of freedom is worth a barrel of slops. Wilbur didn't care. When Mr. Zuckerman reached the pig pen, he climbed over the fence and poured the slops into the trough. Then he pulled loose the loose board away from the fence so there, there was a wide hole for Wilbur to walk through. Reconsider, reconsider, cried the goose. Wilbur paid no attention. He stepped through the fence into his yard. He walked to the trough and took a long drink of slops, sucking in the milk hungrily and chewing the pop over. It was good to be home again. While Wilbur ate, Lurchie fetched a hammer and some eight penny nails and nailed the board in place. Then he and Mr. Zuckerman leaned lazily on the fence and Mr. Zuckerman scratched Wilbur's back with a stick. He's quite a pig, said Lurby. Yes, he'll make a good pig, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur heard the word of praise. He felt warm milk inside his stomach. He felt the pleasant rubbing of, his, of the stick along his itchy patch. He felt, the peaceful, he felt peaceful, happy, and sleepy. It had been a tiring afternoon. It was only about four o'clock, but Wilbur was ready for bed. I'm really too young to go out in the world alone, he thought as he lay down. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for listening to chapter three. And Missy will see you soon. Bye. Yeah.